Hello and welcome back to VPC's 5 and 5 series. As always, I'm Antonio, your host. Now, as we all know, we're in a time of reboots and spin-offs. Whether it's the never-ending Marvel series on Netflix or any of the CSI clones, it's pretty clear businesses like sticking to formulas they know work. The board game industry in this case is no different. And while they'll try and often extend the retail appeal of their games through expansions, sometimes they try the spin-off. The way we see it, just like the TV shows we mentioned, you aren't going to give up the original for a spin-off. They're going to play off your love of the original and attempt to hook you all over again. Well, that's what these games do too. They aren't going to necessarily replace the games that they're based on for each player, but they will certainly make you want to reach for your wallet. <laughs> Here are our list of five great spin-off games. Often called the more gamer version of one of Yellow's best-selling games, King of New York takes what people already love about King of Tokyo, namely great art, kaiju monsters, attacking a city, and rolling satisfyingly chunky dice, and puts them together in a whole new package. Just like the original, you're playing with a Yahtzee mechanic where you can earn various things from points to power-ups, but in this one you get to really feel like you're attacking the city. You see, unlike the original, you can actually rampage your way through New York, destroying buildings and fighting off military vehicles that are trying to stop you from earning ever more fame and becoming the true King of New York, the only way New York knows how to crown him with fame. A spin-off of one of our cafe's classic party games, Resistance Avalon combines two of the best party and large group games we know of, The Resistance and Werewolf. The main gameplay of Avalon is the same as Resistance, with people voting on who goes on missions and then secretly voting for whether the mission is a success or a failure. The change is what happens at the beginning of the game before all of that voting starts. When everyone closes their eyes, instead of just having the spies look up and see who the other spies are, there is a whole round, just like in Werewolf, where people are using special rolls to peek at other people's car roll cards or switch their cards any number of things that will change who you actually think about trusting once the missions start. Combining two things near and dear to my own heart, Star Trek and Castle Panic, Star Trek Panic has already has a head start towards awesomeness in my book. Taking the base game and expanding on it instead of just retheming it, Star Trek Panic gives you a more engaging and thematic experience by adding some new elements. First, we have the roll cards that give each player a character from the Star Trek original series and a special ability that thematically fits with that character. This helps the game feel a little less random, as well as adding another, all but thin, layer of strategy over the original Castle Panic. Secondly, they've added mission cards, which give players different scenarios to, to play that are taken straight from the original series episodes. This all adds up to a package that makes you feel like you're having your own trouble with tribbles. Based on one of the more acclaimed games around, Roll for the Galaxy takes what Race for the Galaxy did with cards and replaces them with tiles and dice. At the start of the game, you will get a random starting planet tile and a random world or technology tile. These will help you determine what dice you get to use at the start of the game. The dice represent your population, and each side is a type of action they can do or help you do. Just as there are different kinds of people, there are different kinds of dice. Each type is represented by a different color of die, each with its own configuration of symbols based on what it can do best. Again, just like people. Each turn you use the die to roll to determine which phase of the game you would like to enter that turn. All in all, most people find this to be a more streamlined and no less immersive way to enjoy building a galactic empire than the original. Lastly, we have Pandemic the Cure, or as some call it, Pandemic the Dice Game. Clearly, we have a thing for taking great games and adding some dice to them. In The Cure, instead of using a hand of cards, you will roll a die on your turn, and that roll will determine which actions you can take. Each roll, in addition to having their own special set of abilities, comes with its own set of die, out which also favor their specializations. In short, there's a much greater variation how the game plays for each roll than in the original Pandemic. This adds a layer of both strategy and replayability to the cure, which is a good thing considering that at this point many people have already played an awful lot of Pandemic. Throw in the fact that this game sets up in a minute and takes just about 30 minutes to play, and this one really gives you a whole new reason to save the world. 
Well, that's it for our list and our video. Don't forget to leave us any questions, omissions, or grievances in the comments below. Or you're welcome to come down to the cafe and argue with us in person and try any of these great games. And if you really liked our video, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep